The Lagos Police Command has commenced disciplinary procedures against two officers indicted for partaking in the killing of Tina Ezekwe within the Yonowuru area of the metropolis. The State Commissioner of Police, CP Hakim Odumosu, had on May the 29th ordered an in-depth investigation into the circumstances surrounding the death of the 17-year-old after it was revealed that the conduct of two officers, ESP Theophilus Otobo and Inspector Oguntoba Ola Migoke, linked with the incident fell short of professional standards. While the ASP will be appearing before the first disciplinary board sitting in Abuja, Inspector Ola Migoke is undergoing an orderly room trial, which is in-house court trial at the State Command Provost's office. The CP assured that as soon as the internal discipline, disciplinary proceedings have been duly exhausted and culpability of the indicted officers have been established, they will be arraigned in the court of competent jurisdiction for prosecution. And joining us now to look at this and other development is former Inspector General of Police, Solomon Arase. Good morning, Mr. Arase. Uh, good morning, Amaka. Thank you for being with us uh, this morning. Uh, very quickly, what's your take on this latest outrage? There's the death of 17-year-old uh, Tina Ezekwe in Lagos and that of a 23-year-old Uwa in Benin. Should Nigerian women be scared to move around you know, in places where they should feel safe? Is that where we are? Uh, absolutely no, Amaka. Uh, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's unfortunate that the two incidents they happened. Uh, but I can tell you that uh, in 2015, uh, there was a, a gender-based platform that was set up by the Nigerian police force uh, to look into these issues of you know, protecting women, especially when uh, they have incidents like this. Uh, I am very, very sure that that platform is still uh, active and robust and they should be able to step in immediately. I, my, my heart goes to the families of um, Uwa in Benin and uh, the uh, Tina in Lagos. Uh, let me start with the one in, uh, in Benin. Uh, the prompt response of the Inspector General of Police is very reassuring uh, that he's going to assist um, the command with uh, you know, forensic assistance. <clears throat> but I also know too that uh, they used to have in those in uh, in those days uh, a scene of crime vehicle that could easily moved into that scene to secure the place. Because I don't know now what evidence they are going to uh, be able to assemble from uh, what has happened, you know, in Benin, because uh, the time lag. Uh, the scene may have been contaminated. I saw the scene, you know, on the television, and uh, it it was so it was such that a professional police officers or investigators will be able to lift sufficient evidence from that scene. Hmm. But because of the time lag, I don't know if they will be able to do that yet. But what I will also advise is that for both cases, um, I expect that. Um, the gender units of the Nigerian police force will be able to get a legion officer that will be giving the families of this, <clears throat> the families of these uh, girls, the psychological reassurance that mm. something is going to be done. Uh, the family is not expected to get all the information from the social media or television uh, houses as it were. Mm. Uh, there's somebody, preferably a, a, a woman police officer who should move in immediately and be with the families to be updating them on the procedures and the uh, timing of um, uh, how the investigation is going. Mm -hmm. For Tina in Lagos, it's, uh, it's very, very sad. Uh, I, I think uh, our the anger management or the professional conduct of police officers when they are dealing with issues of social disorders should be properly measured. Um, you, you know, this, it, it was a straight bullet, they said. But thank God that, you know, the commissioner of police have moved in swiftly to ensure that it, the police officer, the ASP, and the other constable who was involved, they are already in custody. Uh, the police has a very potent uh, internal control mechanisms for dealing with issues like this. You just mentioned that the room trial has started. If the room trial has started, 
I, I hope they will be able to accelerate it and make sure that uh, the people, if they are found culpable, they should be arraigned immediately. Mm -hmm. That is the only way mm -hmm. we can send the right message to people that for you know that, that there are consequences for you know for, for uh, professional misconduct. All right. when Ms. You don't Mr. Arase, <laughs> sorry to cut you short there. You know, in spite of repeated condemnation and promises to better train you know police officers, we still have behaviors you know like this that lead to the loss of lives of uh, people. Tina is one of many. You know, so what? What more can be done? What more can the authorities do in this regard that we will consider as practicable? <clears throat> well, uh, Amaka, what my, my own suggestion would be that we should try to reduce the firearms we have, you know, out there. Uh, I'm sure you must have been watching what has been happening in the United States, um, despite the anger, you know, overreaction by the populace about what has happened. Uh, the, the handling of the issue has been professionally managed by the police officers there. Uh, you will see that firearms is usually de-emphasized de when dealing with such social disorders. Mm -hmm. So, you know, in this country, I'm, look, I'm looking forward to a situation where we de-emphasize uh, the use of firearms in dealing with issues like this. Yeah, though our own situation is a bit different because uh, you have violent crimes in the society, but at the same time, um, if we reduce, there was a time we had, we said, okay, if officers who are going on um, these duties, we are able to look at their mental health. Mm -hmm. uh, policing itself has a lot of, uh, you know, stressors, you know, things that will usually interfere with your sense of judgment. Uh, so we, the, their, their supervisors have to start looking at people that they give firearms to. You don't just give firearms to every, every constable or every sergeant on beat. You must be able to look at, you know, his temperament, his ability to be able to, you know, manage crises and all those type of things. Uh, I, I, I think our training has to be jazzed up. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that important um, <laughs> clarification that you brought there. Now, in the case of UWA, the IGP has already deployed more investigative and forensic support uh, to the Edo State Police to unravel the death of that young lady. Some people have said maybe, well, this response may have been engineered by the media, uh, the coverage and protest. But why is it beyond the state command? Uh... You know, when things happen, when things happen in our, you know, uh, in our environment, there's usually this um, tendency for us to want to react so that there will be that. I mentioned earlier mm -hmm. the issue of, you know, psychological reassurance of the populace. If you, if the, the President IG has been very, very passionate about driving community partnership in managing, you know, crime in the country. So if you are talking about, you know, winning the hearts and minds of, you know, the populace, when things like this happen, then you, 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 if you don't take, you know, proactive or effective measures to quickly halt it and deal with it, the, the, the law enforcement agencies, they, 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 you know, people will start losing confidence in them. I think that is uh, against the background where he had to send... Um, <clears throat> but I'm very, very... I'm, um, I, I think the Edo uh, State Police Command, they have the capacity to deal with the issue. Uh, maybe it's just to, you know, see that the I's are properly, you know, dotted and the, T, the T's are properly crossed. Uh, because uh, I was listening to the uh, public relations officer, I think yesterday or this morning, saying that somebody has already been taken into custody. Sorry. Uh, which means that, yes, which means that uh, they are already making some progress. So um, maybe it's just to give them some uh, additional, uh, increase their capacity to be able to deal with the issue. Mm -hmm. But I, I think that every police investigator, whether in Lagos, whether in New York, whether in Benin, you know, who is in the uh, state CID or the criminal, should know the steps. You know, there are checklists to deal with when you have things like this. That's what I was saying you know, has, was the scene properly secured? Was it contaminated? If it is contaminated, then it means that even the forensic uh, assistance they are going to need 
is going to be uh, is going to be a waste. When we set up the gender-based uh, platform, we had if we had feeder, we have the medical uh, doctors who would have you know in a case like this quickly moved in to carry out you know uh, examination on the corpse of you know the lady, right. take samples and all those other things. The scene would have been properly preserved to ensure that you know for every crime amaka for every crime that is committed the deviants they usually leave traces at the scene of crime you know either it is blood stain either it is their hair either it is their fingerprints so you know it is how prompt the police is able to step in to ensure that the scene is properly preserved that determines, you know, the outcome of the future uh, investigation and prosecution. Mm. Thank you so very much, Mr. Rase, for your time, and keep safe out there, too. Thank you very much, Amaka, for having me.